Hello everyone, this is Lomi, and today I'm making soles for what will eventually be for all shoes. A lot of companies do left and right soles, but since I don't have as much at my disposal as far as storage space or materials, I'm going to make one universal sole that will work for both right and left shoes. I begin the process by tracing around one of Frawl's feet on a scrap of paper, then round out the shape to make it uniform. My first try I bring the lines in a little, thinking I'm compensating for tracing around the outside of the foot, forgetting that the shoe will have to be bigger than her foot for it to go on. So once I see the first template is too small, I trace around it again and make it a little bigger. This one looks good, so I'll use it to make the master. I begin the process by taking a nice soft piece of polymer clay and rolling it out to a thin sheet. Once it's big enough to fit the template, I press it down into the clay, just enough to leave a mark around the edge. Then I cut the clay with a wooden sculpting tool, leaving the shape of the sole behind. I smooth out the edges, then use more clay to start creating the heel. It won't be a high heel, just a little one, so she'll be able to wear these shoes with her flat feet. I didn't buy high heel feet when I got the doll, and I've never been able to justify paying so much to ship just a pair of feet from Fairyland to me. Once the heel looks like it's about the right shape and size, I use a little more clay to smooth out the meeting between the two pieces. I even out the size and shape of the heel, then I bake it to save my progress. In order to get the slope from the heel to the front of the sole, I just bake it sitting right side up, and the slope naturally forms while the clay is soft. Once the initial shape is baked and cooled off, I use more clay to smooth out any bumps, creases, and holes to the best of my ability. I press the sole firmly against my work surface to make sure the clay I add to the heel is nice and flat. And I also use clay to fill in the slope on the top of the sole so it isn't so drastic. Like I said, I want these to work for her flat feet. After I have the clay sort of smooth, I bake it again, then it's time to start refining the shape. I use a hobby knife to shave away extra chunks and ridges of clay, and also to refine the shape of the heel. Then it's time for sanding, my least favorite part of this hobby. I wet sand while wearing my respirator. The water not only helps control the dust, but gives a smoother finish to the sanded piece. For this project I use a coarse nail file and some 320 grit sandpaper.
once it's all sanded and has time to dry, I move on to making a mold to cast the soles in resin. I create a base out of a piece of plasticine clay, which I rolled out last time I made molds and then stored flat. To build the mold, I use my daughter's Lego bricks, which allow me to build a mold exactly the right size. She has a disproportionate number of blue bricks. I press the whole mold down firmly, then it's time to mix my silicone to create a mold. I go to mix my silicone and discover it's expired way sooner than it should have. It usually lasts a month or two after being opened, but it's already thickened up so much that instead of being smooth and pourable, it's lumpy and so thick it won't pour at all. I try and try to get it to go in smoothly, but it just won't run under the sole. I'll have to try something different. I put the sole in upside down, cover it with more lumpy silicone, and then I just have to hope for the best. I was so unprepared for this, I'm not even wearing gloves. Fortunately, my skin isn't sensitive to silicone, so I can wipe it off and be fine. But it's always best to wear proper protective gear, just in case of emergencies. I let the mold cure overnight, then remove the clay and Lego pieces. I'd planned to make this a two-part mold, but hopefully it'll work as a one-part mold just as well. I cut down through the silicone until I find the heel, then carefully carve it out. This will be where I fill the mold. I also cut a hole in the front, where the sole is, to create a vent, which will allow air bubbles to escape. And I cut a curved line into the side, where the slope in front of the heel is, which makes it easier to get the piece out of the mold. The silicone was so thick that there are a few bubbles against the shoe sole, but it's nothing I can't cut or sand off a finished casting. I mix and pour some resin into the mold, tilting the mold to try to get it all the way down into the front. Then I fill it the rest of the way and come back to see how it turned out about 20 minutes later. The resin is nice and firm, so I pull it free and... Ugh, this cast is horrible. I didn't get all the bubbles out of the front, so this one is completely unusable. I'll have to do a better job of getting all the air out of that front part of the mold. I try again, finally wearing that glove I should have been wearing the whole time, and really rock the mold around to make sure all the air is out. Then I fill it up and pour the leftover resin into one of my eye molds, just so it's not wasted. Now we'll check this casting and... Perfect! It came out great. This is just what I need for my next pair of doll shoes. I use a knife to cut off the resin that filled the vent, and the bit of flash from the seam. I'll need to sand these before I can finish them, but I'll have to cast another one first, and decide if I'm going to paint the soles or dye them. That's all for today though. Thanks for watching. Bye.